What is up guys? We are here today with Private, I mean drive it, drive, drive it Ryan. Drive it Ryan. <laughs> and um, we're gonna talk a little bit about clutch overrides. Now this is his 1997 BP Miata engine. It is flipped upside down so we can have a clear view here at his rotating assembly. So I, a couple things that I wanna, I wanna talk about and I think this is, this is key if you really actually care about your motors. Two things, one is you should be deleting your clutch overrides in your cars, especially if you don't daily drive the cars. And this, is, and this is why. The manufacturers put the clutch override in your car, so when you start the car, if you're a knucklehead and you start it in gear, it won't take off and ram through your garage door or run over a little child or just cause catastrophic damage because people are just knuckleheads, so that's why they add them. But what's really happening is, is especially when the cars are not daily driven, is that oil drips off of your crank and your rotating assembly. You lose oil in between your clearances here, so your thrust washers and your rod bearings. Not so much the rod bearings, they will actually like hold some oil in them, but in, in, in this case, for our example, it's your thrust washers, and your thrust washers are what ride in between um, your rods. So what happens is, is oil drips off and then they become dry. At the back of the crankshaft here, where you're, it would be your flywheel with your clutch and your, and your pressure plate bolted to it. When you depress the clutch pedal, your clutch fork actuates, or the clutch slave actuates the clutch fork, which then pushes a lateral force up against the pressure, place, uh, pressure plate to, to uh, release the clutch. And what that's doing is it's putting a, a side force on the entire rotating assembly in your crankshaft. So when you start that motor up with no oil on anything, you're shaving down those thrust washers every time, machining them down little by little. And what happens is over time, more and more material come off and you start to develop what's called end play. And end play is the forward and back movement of the crankshaft. And the way you can check for end play on your car to see if it, this is becoming a problem is you could take a pry bar and push up against your front. This would have a front crank pulley on it. You could push up against your, your, your front crank pulley off of the sway bar and push the assembly back Pay close attention to the front nose of the crank and then have somebody press the clutch pedal in. If you can see movement coming forward, that is not a good thing. That's too much. You really, it, it should make a noise, but it shouldn't, it, you should not really be able to visibly see it. If you can visibly see movement, then you have a lot of end play and the, the life of your motor may be compromised. When, when this starts getting out of whack side to side, everything else starts to wear prematurely. Um, ultimately, you'll start losing compression in the motor because piston rings and stuff will start making contact with the cylinder sleeves. So that's one of the, that's, that's the first thing. And the second thing I want to add is to, I want to talk about oil weight. I get, I get questioned quite a bit. Ryan, I'm just kidding. Ryan didn't really question me on this. I just want to show his face. Um, I get questioned quite a bit for what weight of oil I run in my cars. And I've actually gotten into arguments with people in the past. This is a long time ago when I was more of a hothead on the forms, but um, I run what the manufacturer specs and clearances their rod bearings for. In my opinion, and some people may disagree, that is the most critical component of the engine. Therefore, you should be running the oil weight that is best suited for that clearance. I don't care about anything else. Yes, camshafts matter, beaten on the lifters, but bearing clearances are the number one, in my opinion. So on all my Miata stuff, I run 10W30. That's the factory spec weight. That's what I run. I run Royal Purple, their HPS stuff, the non-API compliant one. I think there's zinc in it. But, you know, as long as you're running a good 10W30, it shouldn't really matter. And I think that will help increase the longevity of your motor. So. Do you have anything to add on this? That's all I really have to add on this, but it's a good teaching moment and I want to share that with you guys while we have it out. We'll have more on Ryan's build coming shortly and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what we're doing. But run 10W30 in your Miata. Don't run anything else. I don't care what anybody else says, especially if it's turbocharged or anything. Well, actually, let me add this. I will add one exception. You can go thicker 
if you're doing like a track day, say it's a forced induction car, well I'm knocking stuff over. Say it's a forced induction car and you're doing a track day where it's gonna, there's gonna be high RPM with a lot of heat, a lot of sustains, like just load on the motor. In those cases, I would say it's okay to increase the weight of the oil, but you better give the thing a really good warm up before you start beating on it. Get that oil up to temp, let it loosen up a little bit. Those are the only exceptions where I'd run a thicker oil. Thinner, forget it. All these new engines with the thin oil, I'm pretty sure they just do it so the motor craps out and you get better gas mileage. So you, the cars are like more and more disposable. And I think that's why we see a lot of cars with like zero weight oils. In my opinion, they're not a good thing. So that's all I got for this one, guys. Thanks for saying goodbye, Ryan. Till next time, done.